What's going on guys and welcome to Who to Sign For. Now in this series I'm giving you my recommendations on what players to sign for a specific team in career mode. Now before we go on I will say that the signings you'll see aren't designed to be realistic and that the player ratings and potentials of the players may vary depending on what database you're using and how they perform for you during the season. Obviously you don't have to follow all the tips but this is really just a set of guidelines to give you a hand if you're stuck for ideas and want some suggestions on what players you could sign for a certain club. This is mainly a at those of you who may be new to the game just need a little bit of advice or for those of you out there who just want a few recommendations on what players to sign for a team you may be using in career mode this year. The team we'll be using in today's video is Manchester United and of course Manchester United start off with a transfer budget of £57.5 million and once again I didn't use any boosts or of course go to the pre-season tournaments to get any additional money. So £57.5 million is the transfer budget for Manchester United and of course what you need to consider with United is that right now they're in a transition. Of course after Ferguson decided to retire David Moyes came in, didn't exactly do the job that the ball would have been hoping for, Louis van Gaal has taken over as well and the squad is going for a massive rebound. So many of the players have left, so many new faces have come in. United squad is still in transition right now. As you look for the squad report right now, it is still a very, very decent squad. They've made a couple of good additions to the squad this year as well. There's some decent young talent in there too. A couple of uh, youngsters loaned out as well. But United squad really is in transition right now. And what I would say is that for the first season with Manchester United, you don't need to be going for the jugular and to try and win as many trophies as possible. My recommendation if you're doing a Manchester United career mode is make your first season the basically laying the groundwork you know your first season is all about laying the groundwork for the future and buying in players that could have the potential to be really good in the future and also nurturing the young talent you already have the squad as you showed right there isn't too bad whatsoever but the one recommendation I would recommend for a player to come in right away for United is a new centre-back yes you got Rojo yes you got Smalling yes you got Jones but I still believe that a world-class centre-back or someone who's got the potential to be world-class in the future would be a really good signing for United to try and shore up the back line and stop your defence from leaking too many goals my number one target for a centre-back for Manchester United is this guy right here, Rafael Varane of Real Madrid. As you can see, we can get him for about £22 million. He's valued at £17.5 million. He's only 22 years old, 82 overall already, and Rafael Varane has the potential to hit 89 overall. With game time and player training as well, he could exceed that and get into the 90s. And for £22 million, he's the number one target, I would say, if you're doing a Manchester United career mode to shore up the back line, be a centre-back that will grow and be really good for the first team already. Lacazette was the signing I made for Arsenal and the reason was because he's had a potential for the future and he's good enough for the first team already. Varane is that player for Manchester United. Good enough for the first team to go straight into your first 11 and also be good enough to get to a really high overall in the future. So for £22 million for an 82 overall centre-back at just 22 years old, Varane would be my number one target. That's the first signing I would recommend making if you are doing a Manchester United career mode. Try and shore up the back line and with Varane's potential as well, he could be the star of your side for years to come at Old Trafford. Now the second signing I'd recommend making for Manchester United is this guy, Andre Carrillo of Sporting. He's 24 years old, 80 overall, a right midfielder, and he's also out of contract at the end of the year, which means you should be able to get him for a decent fee. And then I recommend selling Antonio Valencia, who's currently a right midfielder, the Ecuadorian for Manchester United. Been there for a few years, obviously. 29 years old, 79 overall. I'd recommend shifting him on and bringing in Carrillo as a replacement. He's five years younger, uh, Carrillo, and of course he's got the potential to reach 80 85 as well. He's 80 overall right now, so he's good enough to be an impact player from the bench. Maybe someone to bring on for a player like Matter or Depay if they're not doing the job for you right now, uh, you know, in game, for example. Bring him off the bench, use that pace. Carrillo will be a really good option. If you could sell Valencia as well for a few million pounds, as you can see, we negotiate an 11 million pound deal from Monaco. That means that part of the transfer fee you'll be paying for Carrillo will be paid for by Valencia's departure. So my recommendation is to bring in Carrillo and sell on Valencia so you're not spending too much on Carrillo once you've uh, you know knocked off the uh, the fee you'll be getting for Valencia and therefore Carrillo as a replacement will be a better player for the future at just 24 years old and as you can see Sporting don't want to let go of him but it's okay they're asking for 20.5 million pounds you don't have to pay that just keep upping the uh, the transfer offer by a few million pounds we went in for a 16 million pound bid and as you'll see they go ahead and accept that after this negotiation. Now another player I'd recommend selling just like Valencia is Victor Valdez. The backup goalkeeper for Manchester United may currently be at 82 overall but he's 33 years old and Valdez is out of contract in the summer. Now with David De Gea recently signing a new deal in real life you're probably not going to give too much game time to Valdez as he's four ratings lower than De Gea and also several years older and of course if he's going to be out of contract in the summer you're probably not going to renew his deal as his wages are quite high right now anyway. You've also brought in Sergio Romero who you can't sell in the first season as he's a new signing for you 
So I, well, in the first transfer window. So I would recommend selling on Victor Valdez, having Romero as your backup goalkeeper because he's, he's, you know, he's okay. 76 overall isn't too bad. Sell Victor Valdez, get as much money from him as possible as he is out of contract in the summer, and you're probably not going to renew his deal. And uh, you know, once you've got the money for Victor Valdez, you can sign uh, more players and strengthen other areas in the squad, which will be considered more important. Uh, regardless, Andre Carrillo, as you can see, we did negotiate a 16 million pound bid for the uh, winger, as you can see from Sporting and uh, also Valdez. We did uh, accept a bid from Real Madrid. I thought it was kind of cool. Uh, he actually turned down going to Real Madrid because of his history with Barcelona. Never actually seen that before, so I thought that was kind of cool. But uh, yeah, Carrillo will be my second choice for a signing for Manchester United. We get hold of him for 16 million pounds. Once again, it's a pretty decent deal for a backup winger. He's valued at 14 million pounds already. So you're just paying 2 million pounds over his valuation. He's 24 years old, 80 overall, and has the potential to hit 85 in the future. And if you're a skiller out there, he's got five star skills, which is also really, really nice. Now, another player I'd recommend signing for Manchester United is Saido Berahino of West Brom. He was desperate to leave in the summer transfer window, but of course, he never got his move away from the Hawthorns. But Berahino, you can sign for about £7 million on the game. He's 76 overall, and a young English striker at just 21 years old has a potential of 85 overall. As you can see, West Brom actually accept that bid straight away of £7 million, and that for a player that can hit 85 overall in the future is a very, very decent deal. Now, of course, you've brought in Memphis Depay, and I'm sure you'll want to have him as your headline striker. He's made a great start to his Manchester United career in real life. Very happy for him. But Berahino is a backup choice. Someone to come off the bench, for example, is a pretty decent option. I don't believe you have to sign a world-class striker in the first season of Manchester United. Because if Martial's not doing the job, you could push Rooney up to play as the main striker. Berahino is an option off the bench for just £7 million. It's a really cheap deal. He's got the potential to 85 overall, which is very, very good. And he could be a really good option for the future, as well as someone to come in and play as an impact sub and play in cup games as well off the bench too. As you can see, Valdez, as we see, we negotiate a deal to sell him to Barcelona, which is fine with me. So Barcelona want to take him back after letting him go for free. And also Berahino comes in for £7 million. So that would be my third recommendation for a signing for Manchester United. Saido Berahino from West Bromwich Albion. Take him to Old Trafford. He may not be, you know, a flashy signing, for example, 76 overall. But either way, when you've got the potential to 85 overall in the future, with enough game time and player training as well, he could possibly exceed that. He could be a really good option for a cheap striker to come in that could score a few goals in the first couple of seasons and then try and develop him for the future as well. As you can see, we sell Valdez right there too, which is fine with me. Obviously, he wasn't going to get too much game time. And, of course, his contract was up at the end of the year. Now, I did say that you could have Sergio Romero as a backup goalkeeper. But if you don't have much confidence in Romero, that's totally fine. You can bring in someone like Alisson here from the Internacional in Brazil uh, for around £10 million. Now, his contract is also up at the end of the year. But he is 22 years old. And, therefore, you can't sign him in January on a pre-contract unless he hits 23 uh, before then, which I'm not sure he does. But a 79 overall, this goalkeeper, 22 years old. And Alisson has the potential to hit 85 in the future. So, just like with Berahino, just like with Carrillo, he may not be amazing right now to go straight into the first team, but he's a good, safe pair of hands as a backup goalkeeper, which is exactly what you want, and he's also got the potential to get even better. So if De Gea does end up leaving the club in the game, then you could possibly use Alisson as your first choice goalkeeper, maximise his potential, get him in the player training feature, maximise his game time, and see if he can exceed 85 potential, which is what it is right now. 79 overall is a totally fine starting overall for a backup goalkeeper for a club like Manchester United. You'll set you're signing for less than what you sold Valdez for so you're making a profit right there and he's only a few ratings lower and he's 11 years younger with higher potential and once again you don't have to sign Alisson if you don't want to um, again you don't need to get a backup goalkeeper but I would recommend it anyway just in case you don't have the faith in Sergio Romero and of course because this guy does have 85 potential if you give him some game time in the cups use the player training feature he could possibly hit that and give, uh, provide some good competition for David Heyer he's also on lower wages than Valdez too which is good to try and reduce the wage bill at Manchester United now now, two more signings I would make for Manchester United before the, you end the summer transfer window are Andrew Robertson from the recently relegated Hull City and also Isaac Success as well from Granada. Now, these two players are squad players. You don't need to sign these players. They're basically optional, really. But Robertson has the potential to hit 84 in the future and Success has the potential to hit 82. Now, they may not be amazing potentials, but these are squad players. These are not the type of players you're going to throw into the first team in the first season and try and maximise their potential. They're there 
there really for cover and also to bring the average age of the club down and also uh, you know make sure that the signings you make aren't going to ramp up the wage bill. So Robertson, of course, a good understudy for Luke Shaw. He has the potential to hit 89 in the game, which is insane. Robertson will be happy with a backup role and of course as a score player to play understudy and uh, you know to try and get him a few a bit a bit of game time here and there just to get a few ratings higher uh, in the first couple of seasons. He'll try and provide some competition for Luke Shaw, but really these players right here, you don't have to sign them. They're just squad players. They provide more cover. They're good depth for the team. And of course, because they're young and have potential of 84 for Robertson, 82 for success. They're basically just there to make sure that you've got a, bit, a better future for United, just in case those players don't work out for you, like Luke Shaw, like Saido Berahino, for example. These are replacements for them if they don't work out. And you can try and maximise their potentials if those players don't work out for you, United. But regardless, as you can see, we accepted, we added a bids accepted there of £2 million for success. And I think it was £4 million for Robertson. So £6 million for both of these players on relatively low wages too and as you can see right now their overalls aren't too bad uh, Robertson is 73 I think it was and success was in 70 once again they're squad players they're not first team players but they provide cover they provide depth and they're good options for the future as well I'd recommend loaning out success if you don't plan on using him much in the first season whereas keep Robertson as a backup left back for sure and play him in the Capital One Cup and the FA Cup games if you would like to do so but these are the two players in and those are the signings I'll make for Manchester United six players right there and once again they may not be too flashy but the point is with Manchester United what you're trying to do is lay the groundwork for the future build for the future you spend 61 million pounds you're left over a little bit of money left over too after the sales of players like Valencia and Valdez too so if you want to make more signings in January try and buy some free contract players I think it's always worth doing in the first season try and leave a little bit of money left over from the summer transfer window just in case you want to make more signings in a January transfer window but as you can see you know the introductions of Varane, Carrillo, Berahino and Alisson all of those players are going to strengthen your bench and your first team whereas Robertson and success are players for the future that will be in the resis but Varane of course is the headline sign you can see he already grew a rating since coming in and as we enter September there he's always gone up to an 83 Varane is the headline signing in this Manchester United team I think he'd be a really really good option and the other five players right there as well not too bad as players for the future, impact subs too, and just players you want to keep a close eye on for their development. So those are the players I would recommend signing for Manchester United. After we've made those signings, this is how the first 11 would look. Only Varane would go straight into the first team, but you would probably have Carrillo and Berahino and Alisson on the bench as well. So once again, just like I did with Arsenal in the first two to sign for, I thought I'd simulate to the end of the season and saw how Manchester United got on. In the Premier League, they finished in third place behind Arsenal in second and Everton in first place. How about that? With uh, 83 points. Martinez won the title for Everton. So United finished in a higher league position than last season where they finished in fourth place. That's an improvement on last year. In the FA Cup, they reached the semi-finals. Also an improvement on last year. They got knocked out in the quarter-final stages by Arsenal. In uh, in the game this season, they got knocked out in the semi-final stages by Arsenal once again. They did win their first piece of silverware since 2013 as well, which was the uh, Community Shield. They won the, uh, the Capital One Cup in this game. And also in the Champions League in their return to Europe, they reached around the 16th stage before being knocked out by PSG. So one trophy, their first trophy since 2013-14 seasons. That's good to see as well. And of course, finishing a higher league position too and a better FA Cup finish. Also good to see as well. And as for the squad, as you can see, there were improvements for Rafael Varane. He went up to an 85. Korea went up to an 82. Berahino went up to an 78. Alisson was the only player that didn't grow from the sixth signing. He stayed at a 79. But Robertson grew to a 76 and success went up the rating to 71. So Varane, as you can see in the first season, he's the headline signing of this Manchester United career mode already gone up by three ratings in just one season so with enough form uh, with enough game time with enough player training this guy could easily reach the 90s and you know that is just an amazing signing and an amazing investment for just 22 million pounds hence why I would definitely recommend signing Rafael Varane if you are doing a Manchester United career mode this year also a side note Martial grew to an 81 so I said he didn't need to go ahead and buy uh, a new world-class striker for United if I were you I'll just develop Martial he's got the potential to 86 I do believe so just give him a lot of game time hopefully he'll develop and hopefully he'll bang in the goals for you for years to come and Berahino and success will be those backup uh, backup options from the bench and the resis as well so those are the signings I would make for a Manchester United career mode once again you don't have to follow all these tips and suggestions they're basically just me giving you ideas on who I would recommend signing if I was doing Manchester United career mode and hopefully the suggestions I give may help you in some way 
If they do, then please do leave a like. So it's much appreciated. It really does help my channel out. Thank you for watching the video. Regardless, I really do hope you have enjoyed. If you have enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like. And of course, if you have any suggestions on who you would sign for Manchester United career mode, let me know down in the comments down below. Maybe you've got some different ideas on how you would run a Manchester United career mode. And also, don't forget to let me know what team you'd like to see me do next in this series. So thank you for watching. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you for the next episode of Who to Sign For very soon.